Come with us for part two of our Oslo series and a whirlwind tour of the city's best free attractions. Starting with the famous and bizarre Sculpture Park before heading to the Royal Palace just in time for the changing of the guard. After which we visited Akahus Fortress with its fantastic harbour views and a quick detour via City Hall before a spot of lunch on the waterfront. And lastly to the iconic Opera House. So let us show you how much you can cram into a single day of sightseeing in Oslo. So we start our day having checked out of The Thief, considered Oslo's top hotel, and you can check out our hotel review in part one of our Oslo series. So leaving our bags at the hotel, we headed down to the Akkerbrigger waterfront. So down here on the harbour front, I see here a number of the ticket offices here. But there are no shortages of places that will one, help you or direct you to where you've got to go. Uh, like I said, we're a little bit time poor. But most importantly here, you can see this is pretty much the launching point out. To getting out, out around uh, the harbour and all the various uh, islands and such you can visit. The one we want to do on a future trip is the Viking Museum. And you can see there, look at that. You can get your head around that lot, but um, you know, everything here has been pretty straightforward so far. So uh, save that for next time. Akabriga Waterfront has no shortage of great places to eat but instead opted for a traditional pastry and coffee on the go before heading to the tram stop to start our whirlwind tour. From here we were taking a few stops to the Vieglands Park and Sculpture Park before heading back into town to the Royal Palace and short walk back to the waterfront. So here we are and we've got off on, I haven't got this right, Vieglands Park and a bit of a Vieglands Park which is um, the home to the Sculpture Park which is uh, where we're just going to head off to, to now. You can check out how to use the Oslo public transport system in part one of our Oslo video series. And we'll put links in the description as always for both the transportation and the sculpture park, which is actually situated in Frogner Park, but takes its name from the 200 sculptures by the artist Gustav Wieglen. That was pretty painless. So it was literally only five minutes on the tram straight up here. If we'd walked from the hotel, probably would have taken us about 30, 40 minutes, but just because of the time crunch, thought it would be uh, easier to do. And nice to experience the public transport. It was a hop on, hop off bus if that is your thing, but frankly, uh, getting around on the public transport to me is a, is a lot more way to immerse yourself in the destination. Now with so many statues, there are just too many to take in. One of the most iconic, which can be found on the bridge, is the angry boy and visitors hold its left hand to bring them good luck however it's causing the statue to oxidize so just like with any toddler throwing a tantrum best advice is leave well alone so after the bridge and then the central fountain you reach the summit of the sculpture park where temptation would be just to run straight to the top however there are numerous statues on all levels so take your time to look around but when you do reach the top, you will not fail to be impressed, with the centerpiece being the towering monolith of human bodies. Visually stunning, if not a little disturbing. And below which you will also find the Wheel of Life. Individual statues on all levels radiating from the centerpiece. So, sculpture part done. Uh, that's uh, enough culture, I think, for today. Um, if you can call culture a lot of naked bottoms, but that is actually very, very impressive here. <laughs> Definitely worth a stop off. I mean, this place is absolutely immaculate. But you know what? It's also free. Time to uh, get back on the tram. We're going to have to walk up to the next stop and where we can get on the different tram line. And then from there, we're going to head back into the top end of town by the Royal Palace. Excuse the sound of cascading waterfalls adds to the ambience and then we will uh, start the top end of town by the Royal Palace and then uh, end down back towards the station where we started when we arrived. At least the rain's holding off. Taking the tram back into town we ended up back on the number 11 which looped all the way back around and has brought us into the back 
by the National Theatre stop by the Royal Palace. But right at the bottom here, we are at, behind me, this street here, is Carl Johannes Gate, which is the main strip that runs all the way through town and goes all the way back to Central Station. We'll have a look at that later. But at the moment, we are here to see the palace. With its elevated position, the palace has sweeping avenues down into the city. The palace has been home to the Norwegian royal family since 1849, and if the royal standard flag is flying, like most palaces, denotes that the royal family is in residence. Now I visited in the October, which meant the palace was not open to visitors, but does open to the public in the summer months between June and August. Palace grounds, however, do remain open throughout the year, so can circle around taking in the ornate gardens and ponds. And as the palace commands such a prime location in the centre of the city, it's very much a green space for the public to enjoy. So aside from the tourists, you'll find many locals cutting through the grounds on their day-to-day -day business around the city. As always, I'll put links in the description where you can also find details of the daily changing of the guard ceremony, which takes place at 1.30pm, so timed this to perfection. As you would expect from such traditions, there is a lot of pomp and pageantry to the ceremony. Crowds start to build ahead of the start of the ceremony around the front of the palace. However, having just completed my walk circling the palace, I came out at the side, which is where the guardhouse was located. And this is where a lot of the action actually takes place. But a word of caution, if you want to watch the whole thing, prepare to get comfortable, because it does take some time. So, changing the guard, caught that nicely in time. Um, however, it goes on quite a while. So uh, they've been marching the uh, two troops out to change over, and now they're changing them over one at a time. So, been there for about 15 minutes watching it, and it's still got a long way to go. So, uh, if you want to see it, make sure you factor in plenty of time to do it. This lot will still want to see it. Coming back down the hill from the palace, we cross over into Karl Johans Gate just by the National Theatre where we got off the tram earlier. This famous avenue leads down from the palace into the main city itself and the commercial shopping areas. However, we did not have any time for any retail therapy, so instead took the scenic walk through the parklands that run adjacent. At the far end of the park, we were gonna hang a right to take us back down to the waterfront and city hall but not without taking in the storting, the Norwegian Parliament, on the way. So pretty much come full circle on ourselves, so having on a big loop round town and the Royal Palace, we've cut back through on the side streets behind me and we are back at the harbour front and there is City Hall. So hopefully we will have a time for a bite to eat and, if we're lucky, get over to see the fort as well. Akahus Fortress has a key strategic position in the middle of Oslo Harbour, separating the two waterfronts of the Opera House and Akabriga. The site itself is completely free to enter and has commanding views from around its ramparts of Oslo Harbour. The site itself dates back to the 1300s and there is a separate paid entrance to Akahus Castle of 100 Norwegian krona, so about £7 sterling or £9 US dollars. There are also the armed forces and Norwegian resistance museums, but the free entry allows you to enjoy these incredible views. So if you're enjoying this video, please remember to check out part one where we stay at the Thief Hotel in Oslo. But most importantly, we ask you to please hit that like and subscribe buttons. It really goes a long way in supporting this channel and allowing us to bring you even more videos like this in the future. I would have liked more time here, however, still had many sights to see. Though glad to see some guests were embracing the Viking spirit. Now I've been a regular to Scandinavia for a good number of years and, and love all of them equally, but I must admit, um, 
with all of my travels. I do have a soft spot for Oslo, I really do. I just, there's something about it. And particularly this part of town, I love the old and the new. You have the backdrop of the mountains here as well. The original Olympic Park still up there, you can go visit. But also getting out here onto the fjords. I just think the, the contrast in scenery in Oslo is really great. And this part of town behind me, obviously, where we're gonna go eat it shortly, is just absolutely fantastic. So coming back to the Ackerbrigger waterfront, I was pleased to say we could fit in an additional stop of Oslo City Hall. The Civic Office have a very utilitarian feel, and if I may even say so, a little Cold War. And although entry is free, remember, you will have to pass through a security cordon, as ultimately are offices of local government. This, however, would be quite a quick stop to see the main highlight of the Great Hall. This impressive space with its colourful murals hosts the annual Nobel Peace Prize ceremony every December. I would not have gone out of my way to see this especially, but given its proximity to other attractions, and if you have the time, may be worth a little detour just to take it in. And a short stroll later, we were back on the other side of the harbour, where we started earlier that morning and yet more floating saunas. But out of all of the ones we were to see, Kuk seemed the most authentic and had the best reputation. But sadly, we did not have time for a steam and a soak. So after a quick detour back to the hotel to collect my bags, and before running to the airport for a late flight, it would have been rude not to come down to experience these fantastic restaurants on Akabriga waterfront, especially now the sun had decided to come out. I'll put links in the description as always, but our restaurant of choice was Olivia, a chain of Italian restaurants that can be found all over the city with a great upscale decor. However, as you can see, no one was indoors, which was no surprise as with the sun shining, everybody had flocked to the waterfront. And this is why this is my favorite part of the city, especially when the weather is this good. So couldn't think of a more fitting way to round off the trip than with fab sunshine, waterfront views, great food and a chilled glass of wine. And although I could have quite happily spent the rest of the afternoon there, headed to the central station, case in tow, but for a final detour to Oslo's most iconic landmark. Firstly, wanting to take in views of the Opera House from the far side of the harbour, we found even more floating saunas, but in an eclectic mix and mishmash of all shapes and sizes. Though to be fair, with a backdrop as good as this, I don't think anybody was caring too much about how polished they looked. And walking round the waterfront, we can see where we started our trip at Central Station and perfect for a quick dash back to make our late flight home. But once at the base of the Opera House, you can really appreciate the iconic shape with its sloping roof, which you can climb up to get to the very top for the best harbour views and a time this again perfectly with the sun low in the sky. Where you find the floating She Lies sculpture depicting the power of ice and water. And then round to the Munk Museum, which even if you're not a lover of art, has both a bistro and cocktail bar on the top floors. But we were saving those for a future visit. As for now, we were about to climb the iconic sloping roof, climbing not just one, but two inclines to reach the very summit. I made it to the top. I'm not sure you're gonna hear it or any of this with the wind. But the dead cow, unfortunately, in my rush to leave. Still, either way. Absolutely incredible view from the top of the Opera House. But all too soon it was time to head down and take the short stroll back to Central Station to catch the Fly to Get Airport Express train back to Oslo Airport. And hope that we've been able to show you how much you can fit into a whirlwind trip to the amazing city of Oslo. And remember to check out the first episode in our Oslo series where we share our travel advice 
and I'll stay at the best hotel in Oslo, The Thief. So check out our channel for other videos on Scandinavia or other great destinations. But for now, thanks for watching and see you again soon.